Hi everyone, this is a revision video for the very exciting topic of polymer based film and sheet and papers and boards. So this covers the section in the revision guide um, with performance characteristics of these two areas of materials. Not going to lie, these are not the two most exciting um, sections of materials that we have to learn, but let's get into it. So these are the materials that you need to have an awareness of. You need to know what they're used for and you need to know one or two properties of each. So on the uh, polymer film uh, and sheet side, on the left hand side, you've got foam board, fluted polypropylene sheet, translucent polypropylene sheet, styrofoam, which you should all know, low density uh, polyethylene, plastisote, cellulose acetate and polylactide. And on the boards and paper side, where you can see it there, watercolour, bleach card, corrugated card, bleed proof, foil back, treated, tracing, layout, metal effect, cartridge, mount board, duplex card and moulded paper pulp. So these are the ones that we need to know. Now, to try and make this more exciting, I did this as a guess, ho a guess who um, kind of PowerPoint in one of my lessons. I'm just going to talk it through as we go through. So you might want to write these down, maybe pause it and write these down um, so that you've got a copy or take a screenshot on your phone. Um, so you've, you can have a guess as we go through which one you think it might be. I know it's very exciting. Brace yourself. So the first one, this uh, material is often used to mount work on. It's sometimes used to make models, specifically things like architectural models. Um, and it consists of two outer layers of card with a foam middle core. Have a guess. You guessed it. It's foam board. So foam board um, is quite often used to, like it says, to make models from. When I was in university doing my product design degree, I had to buy tons of this stuff because they wanted all of your final presentation boards, your sketches, your um, everything spray mounted and mounted onto this mount board. It's lightweight, so here's some properties for you because there's no properties on the screen here. It's lightweight, um, it's rigid and stiff, so your uh, work is not going to get creased or, or bent. Um, so those are the two main kind of um, properties that make it suitable for these applications. Easy to cut as well, it's quite easy to cut, easy to score um, and easy to work with, which makes it suitable for model making as well. Right, next. This one is often used in photographic film. It can all be also be used in packaging film. It comes from a natural source and is biodegradable. So have a guess. It's this stuff, cellulose acetate. So this actually comes from plants, um, meaning it's actually quite a biodegradable, um, non-finite source of um, material. So it's used in, um, in photographic film, and you can see that if you had a question about packaging materials, cellulose acetate would be a good uh, one to talk about because it is biodegradable and from a natural source. So much more um, sustainable than using something like cling film, which is usually low density polyethylene, which comes from crude oil, making it quite bad for the environment. This one, it is a dense closed cell foam. It's often used for modelling and prototyping. It can be cut, shaped and sanded. And here we go. This is styrofoam. Now, this picture on the board on the on the screen here is blue. That's the stuff I used to use when I was in uni and in school. The stuff we have in school is that dark grey. Um, it's not particularly good for the environment, but the thing about it is it's so dense and easy to work with. It, and you can shape it and sand it to such a um, high level that you can produce really high quality prototypes from it. It's quite often used for things like insulation and stuff as well, but it's massively useful for prototyping. This one, it's very lightweight. It's often used in construction signs and it's an extruded sheet. So extrusion is where it comes out in a uh, consistent cross section uh, with corrugations. So corrugation is kind of like a zigzag pattern. Have a guess. It's this stuff. This stuff you used to get when you were a kid, I swear, in like craft boxes and things. So this is called fluted polypropylene sheet. 
Now, you should all know that one of the key characteristics of polypropylene is that it has amazing fatigue resistance, meaning it can be bent back and forth, back and forth without um, breaking or ripping or fracturing. So what this basically means is that this stuff can bend, it can be scored, it can be cut. Um, and But it's when it's not being cut and bent, it's got excellent rigidity. Um, it's uh, waterproof, makes it really good for construction signs. It's not going to uh, degrade or rot in any way. So that's this stuff, fluted polypropylene sheet, good for construction signs. I am transparent, transparent. And it's often used as a biodegradable packaging film. It's polylactide. Now, polylactide is quite interesting because it's actually the stuff that we use for 3D printing. This is it in a slightly different form. And polylactide comes from sugars, um, from things like cornstarch and things like that. So it is a non-finite um, material again. And it can biodegrade, making it obviously another really good option for a sustainable material. So you should really be picking up on this. You should be thinking, hmm, if in the exam I get asked a question about more sustainable options for packaging, polylactide, cellulose acetate, those are two really good examples. This one is translucent. It can be folded millions of times, so it's got excellent fatigue resistance. And it's often used to make folders and packaging products. Have a guess. It's this stuff. We actually have this at school. It's the translucent polypropyl uh, polypropylene sheet. And quite often we make things like um, little hinges from this. You can bend it. And like I said, it can flex and bend multiple times. This is the same material that would be on the front of your planner at school. If you ever used your planners, there'll be one person watching this who uses their planner. The, the polymer... Um, slightly translucent sheet on the front of your um, planner has this is polypropylene um, as well as things like DVD cases game cases are all made from polypropylene um, because of that it can be folded loads and loads of times without breaking so that's that stuff this one good impact resistance often used for swimming floats and gym mats and a closed cell polyethylene foam so it's this stuff so this is its um, kind of brand name, I guess, Plastazote Foam. Why was there always bite marks in them? Do you remember that in the swimming pool? You go swimming, you get a float, and there was always bite marks in it. Weirdos. So this stuff's lightweight. It's obviously very buoyant, floats very easily, good impact resistant. It's soft. It's not going to cause any injuries. It's not sharp. So Plastazote Foam. This stuff. Uh, it's available in very thin sheet. The process for making this is actually called calendaring, which is where you get rolls and the material is passed through these these um, rolls that that kind of squash the material more and more and more and more until it gets very, very thin. It's very flexible. It has good chemical resistance and it's often used for food wrapping and that deadly, horrible, very bad for the environment bubble wrap. So have a guess. It is this stuff low density polyethylene so you get high high density polyethylene and you get low density polyethylene this stuff is not good for the environment it's coming from crude oil it's coming from a finite source um, on one side it can usually be recycled relatively easily um, but it's still coming from a uh, you know a finite source which is not going to be good for the environment this one, this one has a clear binder or a dye layer to help hold the image on the paper surface. It's used for photographic printing. So it's treated paper. So that's this is that posh paper that you buy when you used to print things out on um, printers, like inkjet, inkjet printers, you'd buy like photo paper. So it has a special treated layer on it. Almost like sublimation paper has like a like a shiny side and a dull side. You need to make sure that you print on the right side of the paper. So that's what it's got. It's got like a binder to help hold the picture on the surface. So any photography students out there, you should hopefully know um, about treated paper. This stuff is absorbent and smooth. It can be uh, more textured or it can be quite smooth and it's used duh, for watercolor painting. So this stuff is watercolor paper. I can't imagine you'd be asked a huge question about this in the exam, 
but just remember um, it's it's very absorbent it can handle a lot of moisture so it's quite thick um, watercolor paper because when you're painting with watercolors you use obviously a lot of water and you don't want the paper to um, you know like get too wet so that it, it almost breaks down or it shrivels up or it ripples this stuff kind of maintains its shape quite well this is um, comes from cotton fibers to produce a rigid board um, it's usually used in mountings around pictures and presenting artwork this is called mount board so this stuff is is sometimes used for modeling um, we use it if you ever buy a painting or anything like that you'd have a mount board that goes around the outside um, what else can I say about it it's quite rigid um, it doesn't bend or um, damage easily making it quite suitable and you can get a nice quality finish on it you can get like a beveled edge to make the painting look quite attractive so that's that stuff mount board recycled paper pulp it's molded when wet and dried to a specific shape used for egg boxes fruit packaging and you will now see a lot more um, electronic products using this and it is this stuff molded paper pulp so this is now starting to replace polystyrene because polystyrene the expanded polystyrene the white horrible stuff is awful for the environment cannot be recycled has to be burnt and then lets off something called styrene gas which is really bad for the environment and bad for, for us in general and animals this stuff is exactly the same you can mold not exactly the same it's coming from card it's biodegradable but the advantage of this is that you can shape it to fit the product that you are um, shipping or transporting so for example when I bought my PS5 it had molded paper pulp inside the box and I'm such a saddo that I got really excited that it was like an eco-friendly packaging and the Nespresso that was bought for the department by the year 13s that had molded paper pulp as well inside so this is hint 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 a really good one to remember um, it's something that would be a really good alternative to polystyrene and polystyrene does come up sometimes in the exam so keep an eye out for it and packaging just tends to come up as a, a big thing as well so make sure that you've got some environmental options that you can talk about colors do not run on me and this paper is called bleed proof paper now we don't tend to use this very much in the department because it's really expensive but if any of you go to uni and do a design course architecture interior design anything where you have to use these markers um, you will usually use bleed proof paper and you will have noticed that when you use spirit markers on cartridge paper or any type of paper um, they bleed they run a little bit so you'll put them in one spot and they'll just kind of shift this paper does not do that it's bleed proof paper um, and also you'll notice that when you use markers on paper they go through um, sometimes onto the table underneath so this this paper doesn't do that at all it's kind of designed specifically for these spirit based alcohol markers um, so that's what this is um, it's off white paper it has a slightly textured surface and it's used for pencil inks and pastels so it's artwork basically and it is cartridge paper how exciting so the artists will or their sketchbooks will be made from uh, cartridge paper it's just a higher quality thicker um, more durable paper that can take a lot of different mediums like pencil inks paints all that sort of stuff this is um, another one that sometimes comes up in the um, exam so if you're still with me on this very exciting video this is a card with a polymer fill uh, film or a foil applied on the inside and it gives it a water resistant or sometimes a heat insulating layer so um, this is basically what it is it's foil backed uh, and laminated card so you'll see this on things like Tropicana you know orange juice uh, containers milk cartons if they are card ones um, takeaway box lids you'll see you'll open them up and they, they might have like a foil on the inside of them and there's one major issue with these types of materials to do with the environment they have lots of beneficial properties because they give that water resistance and heat insulation but because it's two materials laminated together 
it means that they cannot be easily separated and therefore not easily recycled. So that is a big uh, drawback for these types of materials. Next one. Uh, we're nearly at the end, I promise. Um, this one gives enhanced aesthetics and can be um, embossed. It's often used on gift boxes and packaging. It's this stuff. It's called Metal Effects Card. It's an odd one, but if you were ever to buy a fancy bottle of champagne, um, some really nice perfume or something like that, you might get a box that has this shiny metal effect kind of look on it. Embossing basically means to um, use like a stamp that pushes into the card and that makes the lettering kind of stand out from the surface, which gives it quite a high quality, uh, attractive finish. So that's what this stuff is. Metal effects card, sometimes used on um, uh, business cards as well. This material is um, it's chemically treated to brighten the surface. Um, and it's often used on greetings cards and high quality packaging. And it's this bleached card. Um, this is a very common one that comes up. It's used on really high quality packaging. So like iPhone uh, boxes that you get, like your, your new phone in or whatever. Um, that kind of card is the kind of card that I'm kind of talking about. And also card that's used for um, greeting cards, birthday cards, things like that. Um, it's been treated to make it that bright uh, white because it's quite difficult to achieve that bright color um, without using chemicals. So it's used for high quality packaging um, for greetings cards where you need a really high quality bright white um, effect. This one is one that comes up a lot. Um, it comes up a lot in GCSE and A level. It has normally has three layers. It protects against impact. It's used for protective packaging, prototyping, takeaway boxes. It is the good old corrugated card. So this stuff is great. It's lightweight. Um, it can protect from um, impact. So it's used rather than used as the actual packaging for a product. It's used for the box to go into, if you see what I mean. So it's like an outside box because it doesn't have any you can't print directly onto it any colours or anything like that. It normally just has black printing onto it. It's it's just sort of like a protective material. Um, and it's used for takeaway boxes because it's lightweight. It keeps the heat in nicely. It stays quite rigid. Um, you can print basic stuff onto it. Um, but it is uh, a really good material for protecting products in transit. So corrugated card. Also very recyclable. This stuff, translucent paper, uh, slightly thicker than layout paper. I think layout paper is 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 basically like a slightly see through paper. Um, it's used for copying images when sketching. So I don't think we need to spend too long on this. It's tracing paper. This one um, is used for milk cartons, disposable cups, plates made of two layers. It's duplex card, so um, kind of similar to laminated card in that it has like um, two different types of materials joined together. Duplex just means two, so it has two layers. And this is to make it, so paper plates are a really good example. It has like a slightly glossy sheen on one side to make it water resistant, which means it's not easily uh, recyclable. So um, again, because it's got these two layers, if one of them has got a plastic coating, then that's going to affect the sustainability. But that's this stuff, duplex card. Last one. Thin translucent paper has a smooth surface. It's used for sketching and technical drawing. It's layout paper. It's also slightly see through. I think that just helps for people to easily um, transfer sketches from one page to another. But it's basically just normal paper. Um, OK, so I hope that was useful. That was 20 minutes long. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you can pause and go back to it if you need to. But that covers all the main things you need to know about papers and boards, the materials and the polymer film and sheet materials. So make sure you know a use and a couple of properties of each. OK, see you on the next one.